God of War Ragnarok is better compared to 2018 in almost every way. It's bigger, more savage, and with way more twists than you might imagine. Today we're going to check out 10 biggest improvements Ragnarok has over its previous title, as hopefully that's going to get you up to speed with all the things you should know before playing it in just a few more days. Also, to celebrate the launch, I'm doing a giveaway for a deluxe edition of God of War Ragnarok. All you have to do is to be a subscriber of the channel, leave a like on this video and follow the links in the description box down below, and I will reach out to the winner at the end of this giveaway. But the skill tree is where you will see some of the first changes, as it's now been more streamlined with more clearly defined separations between melee, ranged and utility or technique as the game calls it. There are many repeats from 2018 that you'll need to unlock again, but also new ones. In total, there's going to be 28 compared to 24 Leviathan skills and 26 compared to the 23 we had back in God of War 2018. So stuff like the Extinguished Flame perk, which is new for the axe, provides bonus melee damage when using against enemies that were previously set on fire by the Blades of Chaos. Obviously a nice way to encourage switching between the two weapons more often for new playstyles. And there's a similar one for the blade, the equivalent called Vaporized Frost that gives you bonus melee damage when previously you've frozen a target with the axe. Skill labors is another important aspect of evolving if you use a skill enough times, which will give you a pop-up during the fights when that happens, you will eventually unlock a mod token slot for that ability. Once unlocked, you have to spend some XP to craft one of its new mods, and you can choose between ones that provide bonus damage, stuns, defenses, weapon buildup, and so on and so forth. You will likely want to mix things up a lot in this case to get as many upgrades as possible for most if not all of the skills eventually. Now moving on to number 2, let's talk about some of the upcoming equipment changes, especially in terms of the armor that no longer features slots to insert enchantments into for their passive buffs, and instead, the game now features an amulet in a separate menu called Enchantment. You'll get to upgrade this amulet with jewels that you find as you play, which will repair the remaining slots up to the total of 9. The enchantments are also split into different sets, and if you match three of the same set, they will provide additional buffs on top of the ones that they already provide. All of this makes it easier to see all of the buffs and things in one place, rather than having to navigate each individual submenu like how it was in 2018. Upgrading armors and weapons is also done pretty much the same as in the previous game, except all of them, especially armors, can now be upgraded all the way up to level 9, instead of just a few times like how it was in 2018. Furthermore, armors will also feature more variety in terms of the bonuses that they provide, being more focused on builds. There's stats in there that buff certain aspects of the gameplay, like your stun attacks, or the new signature Frost Awaken and Whiplash Triangle abilities, and even more interesting ones like, for example, buffing bare-handed attacks, to deal more damage, guarantee poison enemies, and even reduce their power levels, among many other things. These armors are further part of sets, where combining two pieces of gear of the same set will again provide extra buffs, and this will be indicated on each item to better let you know how many pieces left are needed to meet that requirement. But moving on to number 3, in God of War Ragnarok, exploration is going to be a much bigger part of the gameplay to the point that not going off the beaten path and doing at least some kind of exploration might even end up being quite detrimental. The Washington Post describes the side quests in God of War Ragnarok as some of the best in any adventure game, with the quality rivaling and even exceeding that of The Witcher 3. Many of the realms will further open up as you finish the main quest in them, so then you get access to new zones. Using the newly added sled pulled by the two pet wolves should be a nice way to mix things up as you navigate through the new environments. Eventually, you can even use their keen senses of awareness to sniff out new objectives, and just like in the case of the boat sections, you can grab crafting components from the various deposits on your way to your next destination. Similarly, there is an even higher abundance of treasure chests now, and many will require solving some kind of new and slightly more complex puzzle. Atreus will also play a bigger role in them this time around, with many of them using his new sonic arrows to unlock mechanisms and combinations. In fact, combining weapons and using multiple weapons per some of these puzzles is also something quite common in God of War Ragnarok. And you will need all of these tools because the game features more boss fights than ever. 
The starting hours alone are already filled with more boss fights than the start of 2018, and it won't drop off as you journey through the 9 realms, in fact, you're only going to get more of them. There's many bosses during the main story campaign, but even more in the side content, sometimes at the end of side quests or as part of challenges. This also makes them an excellent source of loot like items, weapon upgrades, new attacks and so on. There is even a challenge that rivals the Valkyries from the 2018 game, but so far the info on it is light and we have to thread carefully to avoid any spoilers, so nothing on that so far, but a lot of these new boss encounters will feature mechanics that you need to be mindful of, like using weapons and certain effects in more creative ways that should help keep things fresh for a longer time. This brings us to number 6, and that's the fact that God of War Ragnarok really lets you play with your enemies in more interesting ways than ever before by taking on challenges in style with the more agile traversal. You can press circle to grab onto grapple points and ledges to leap through the air and descend on your foes with impactful strikes. You can even use the Leviathan Fury while jumping during these situations to slam onto the enemies below and cause AoE frost spikes to emerge from the point of impact. It's also possible to do a similar attack with the blades which will cause a fiery explosion instead, but also barehanded or with the shield which instead will cause a shockwave that throws enemies up, perfectly setting up for a lot of stun combinations when barehanded. And speaking of combinations, there's lots of skills and passive effects that promote weapon switching and skillful combat. Like for example, permafrost that powers up the axe with frost damage when doing successive attacks without receiving any damage, which in turn can be further consumed with the glacial upgrade to turn your melee swipes into far-reaching waves of frost damage. Similarly, shields will play a much bigger role in the overall combat, greatly rewarding proper pairing while also introducing a few cool twists, like the ability to double tap L1 and interrupt some of the charged up enemy attacks indicated with the blue colored rings. We also talked about the two types of shields that you can get to use, but there's many more that you can craft as you progress in the game. Now, God of War Ragnarok will open up the map like never before, as we'll finally have access to all the nine realms, including the remaining three Odin locked in the first game. One of them is Varalfheim, the realm of the dwarves, and one of the first areas we'll get to uncover. This distinctive, almost industrial looking areas will look more busy than any other zone we've traveled to so far, featuring massive dwarven structures, large mining operations, and other things we're gonna spend a good chunk of our gameplay into. Asgard is another one, the final realm, and likely the one that's also going to be present, but so far has been kept under the radar quite well. We do know from 2018 that Freya is one of the last beings who knows of a possible weak spot in its wall defenses, so who knows, that might explain how we're gonna be able to travel to it. Deaths or the Vanir will help us, not really sure, they were at war with Aesir in the past, and their homeworld Vanaheim is something that we had a glimpse into, through Freya's magical window back in 2018. But along our journey, one exciting change or addition is the actual introduction of settlements, or at least one of them, because the dwarven town that we get to encounter early on in Svartalfheim looks as impressive as it is complex, with lots of houses, large areas, buildings and water mills built by I assume their large number of inhabitants. So this will serve as a hub of sorts, we can grab side stories from this and complete side objectives, there is also the upgrade bench from Brock and Sindri, we also get to meet other characters in this location, as well as getting other upgrades that will help us later down the journey, and all in all, it makes God of War Ragnarok look way more lively than it's ever been. But moving on to number 9, Ragnarok will feature a lot more replayability this time around, with a lot of extra content unlocking once you finish the main story. Challenges, new zones and quests are some of them, and there's new ways to further progress your build, on top of the ones that we already talked about. Fashion Wars is also going to be part of the endgame, as Sony Santa Monica also added a transmog system, so that you can retain the stats that you need, but apply the looks that you find more stylish. It also seems that gear no longer has tiers of quality, like Legendary and Epic, and instead now focuses on letting you upgrade any piece of gear to bring it to the max level and thus at the end game. This is why I said that there's going to be a lot more replayability because of it. 
And finally, the options that you get for God of War Ragnarok will be on a completely different level. The game will feature five difficulties that you can switch between at any time, with the only exception being the hardest of them, which is Give Me God of War. This can only be selected at the start of a new game in the main menu, and if you switch down its difficulty, you're not going to be able to go back up. But there's plenty other options in there, like for example, you can swap or even remap the interact and the evade the buttons. And if you have other preferences, you can pretty much, I believe, remap most of the buttons on the controller. And there's many other accessibility options that you're going to want to use if you want to further customize your playstyle. In any case, this is pretty much it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.